If you like a nice, creamy, foamy coffee in the morning, a nice big latte or a cappuccino, there's a little bit of magic to understand in there. So to start off, you use low-fat milk. That will get your bubbles going really well. And then you get the surface of your steamer right at the top of the milk. Now, most of the bubbles happen while the milk is still really cold. The big thing is not to go over sort of 70 degrees because then you can start to burn the milk. All these people that serve boiled milk in coffee, you're doing it wrong, people! You're doing it wrong! So, let's have a little look at that. And there is all the foam. But the big question is, how did it get there? Because this is just steam. And when steam goes into water, it doesn't create bubbles it just condenses back into water again. Let's have a look at this by using water instead. When the steam goes into the water, all it does is condenses. It turns into water. So something else is happening to get bubbles into your milk. And it's something called the Bernoulli principle. Now, as the steam comes out of here, like this, it creates low pressure, so that jet of steam is placing low pressure around it. Now, I can show you this in a slightly more visual way with a hairdryer. So, that column of air creates low pressure. You get these little bits of acceleration around the, uh, these little bits of plastic, and that draws things into that flow of air. And that low pressure in your coffee machine is drawing in air. So it's not the steam that makes uh, the bubbles, because steam is just superheated water. It's the air drawn in by the steam. Okay, so you can take a ball and put it into that flow of air, and it stays there. And that is the Bernoulli principle. It's this sucking motion that's created. And it's the same thing that's happening with your coffee. So, we are creating a flow of steam that comes out of here in a jet and it plunges into the coffee. And as it plunges in, because it's at low pressure, it's sucking things towards it, it pulls in air as well. And as it pulls in air, the air bubbles plunge into the milk and the proteins in the milk allow a little bit of stability around each little bubble of air and that will make your foam. Now, foams in milk are relatively unstable. That won't really last for that long compared to eggs, because eggs have a lot more protein, so there's about, probably about 3% protein in, uh, in milk, up to sort of 10% in eggs. And, but that's the protein that is giving you that little bit of foam. Now, I don't know if it really tastes any different, but it does add a little bit of magic to your coffee. In the morning, I love a latte. In the afternoon, I don't need it, but that's how the foam gets in there. It's a little bit of fluid mechanics, and it's brilliant. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, come back and see some of my other videos about the Bernoulli principle and about coffee as well.